It's good to see you today. Hope you're having a good Tuesday. Come on with us to the New Testament. Come up to 2 Timothy. We're going to think about Timothy's mother and grandmother, Lois and Eunice. We actually are introduced to them there in the first chapter of 2 Timothy. Let's read a little bit together. Come on, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 3. Paul says, I thank God, whom I serve with a pure conscience, as my forefathers did, as without ceasing I remember you in my prayers night and day, greatly desiring to see you, being mindful of your tears, that I may be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and and I am persuaded is in you also. To think about that passage, and to think about Timothy's mother and grandmother, to think about them, what, what points can we make about them? Think about that idea of the genuine faith, as the passage says. When I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother and your mother. We're not talking about hypocrisy. We're not talking about a hypocritical faith. We're not talking about those who just come to church just to please mom or grandma or dad or whatever it is. No, 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 no. This is the genuine faith that... Paul is convinced is in Timothy, but he remembers that it was in his mother and his grandmother as well. It's not hypocrisy. It's not fake. It's not any of those things. It is genuine faith, and that is what we need to have as well. We need to have the, we need to have the genuine faith. We need to be reading and studying ourselves. We need to be listening to God's word ourselves. We need to be doing all those things that bring us to faith, the genuine faith the genuine faith that is in the Lord. That is what here, as we think about Lois and Eunice, this is what was this is what was in them. And it was not passed on to Timothy. It was not inherited. It was not by blood, as it is, that it had to be taught. It had to be taught. And we might talk more about that here in just a second. Um Someone had to teach Timothy. You might consider it. It's also, I want you to think about the generational faith. It was being passed down. It was being taught from generation to generation. When Paul says, I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and and I am persuaded in you also. Think about that idea of generational faith. That is why we are teaching our children. That is why our parents taught us, hopefully, right? That this is what happens. You start having generational faith. You start having mothers and fathers teaching their children. As they grow, they teach their children. Timothy's grandmother had probably taught Timothy's mother, and Timothy's mother had probably taught him. To take nothing away from Paul, I understand we've spoken recently recently about Timothy being called Paul's son in the faith. Paul undoubtedly taught him. But as you think about that idea, this idea of generational faith, look back in the passage when it says, and let's make this point, look at verse 5 again, the genuine faith that is in you which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois. Think about that idea, in which dwelt first. This is why we have to break the chain of worldliness. This is why we have to break the chain of sin. As much as we think about generational faith, it has to start somewhere. It has to start somewhere. Maybe your maybe your mother, maybe your parents are Christians. Were their parents Christians? Maybe they were. Were their parents Christians? Maybe they were. At some point in time past though, there was probably those who were not Christians and someone had to go first. Someone obeyed the gospel first. And that's where it started. Paul says, I recall the faith that was first in your grandmother. It was first in your grandmother. And from that first, it became a generational thing as it was being passed down to the next. Think about the faith that is remembered. Did you notice what Paul says there in the account? I thank God, verse 3, whom I serve with with a pure conscience, as my forefathers did. 
as without ceasing I remember you in my prayers night and day, as my forefathers did, as he remembered the faith that was in Timothy, he also remembered the faith in those who went before him, as my forefathers did. So we think about that idea of the faith that is remembered. Look over in chapter 3 and the other common passage in 2 Timothy, over in chapter 3, to look down a little bit, look down at verse 14. It says, But you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them. Think about that, that phrase. Knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation. That wasn't Paul t- teaching him from childhood. That was his mother and his grandmother. And he says, knowing from whom you have learned them, the faith that is remembered. Remember where you came from. As Paul is dealing with Timothy, there is a genuine faith. There is a generational faith. And don't forget that. Don't forget that faith. Remember it. By remembering it, you start having an accountability for those who have gone on before you, I would suggest, amongst other ideas but you have the faith that is remembered. And you have the good works that come. To look back in that passage in chapter 3, all scripture is given by inspiration of God is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Thoroughly equipped for every good work. To look back in chapter 1, when Paul called to remembrance the faith that was in Timothy, which dwelt first in his grandmother Lois, his mother Eunice, persuaded in you also. Think about the idea, how is it, how is it that faith is remembered? How do we see faith? How do we see faith? Faith faith is the evidence of things unseen. How How do we see the faith of a person? That's what that 2 Timothy 3 is about, that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped, furnished unto every good work. What sort of works do you think Lois and Eunice had? What sort of works do you think they had? Well, I know one of the works they had, and that's Timothy. You might consider it the good works that come. That's how we know a faith is genuine. This is how we know, as you think about faith and works, James chapter 2. We see the works. The proof is in the pudding. It's generational here, but there's also a beginning to that. And you have the faith that is remembered. The faith that is remembered. Calling to mind. Just a little bit of our daily bread today. Hope you're having a good day. Hope your Tuesday goes well. Hope you tune in tomorrow for another brief look into God's Word. Just a little bit of our daily bread. Thanks for being with us today.